page right there. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to today's press conference from the Royal uh, Greens Golf and Country Club, home of the fourth edition of the PIF Saudi International, powered by SoftBank Investment Advisors, and the first to be hosted on the Asian Tour. It is a pleasure to have, a, have you with us during this historic occasion. Please let me begin by introducing our top table. As you can see, we are joined for announcement by three very special guests. On the left of our top table, I'd like to welcome Chiu Min Tai, the Chief Executive and Commissioner of the Asian Tour. In the middle, we have former world number one, Mr. Greg Norman, and the CEO of Live Golf Investments. And on the right, Joy Young Kim, who just a few weeks ago at the tender age of 19 was named the Asian Tour Order of Merit winner for the 2020-21 season. We have a very special announcement, so I'd like to welcome Greg to address our media here today and those joining around, from around the world. Greg, over to you. Is it afternoon or morning? Um, good afternoon, everybody. From, from my perspective, uh, being in the game of golf for over 45 years, it's uh, just a great honor to be sitting here. There's a, there's a lot of reasons why I can say that. Um, I've been a global player. I've been uh, very impressed of, and, and helpful in growing the game of golf across all continents that I could possibly go. When you're fortunate enough to be number one player in the world because your, your capabilities and your, your competitive level to get to that spot, um, it's no easy feat. Uh, but when you get there, you have a lot of responsibilities. You have to assume, not necessarily inherit, but you assume. And that responsibility um, differs from many, many players. My responsibility as the best player in the world was to grow the game of golf as much as I could possibly grow it. And to do that, you had to be eyes wide open and ears wide open to see what was going on around the world. Now, a lot has changed in 40 years. There's no question about it. Ju Yong and I were just talking about it inside there. And uh, we, we said, well, we're going to, when this press conference is finished, this is just an example, press conference finished, we're going to do a couple of shows outside here. And, uh, and one, it was the PGA memes. And his eyes lit up. PJ means yes, yes, yes. That's the younger generation. That's what it's all about. So over a 45-year history and 40 years from now, he's probably going to be going, PJ Memes, who's that? But this is an incredible journey, right? And I'm going to get back to my point. It's an incredible journey and an opportunity to be able to reach out to every fan, every player, every stakeholder, every partner that you can possibly can to grow the game of golf. It doesn't happen with one individual. It happens with multiple people multiple organizations. And it happens with the belief that the game of golf is an asset class. We invest into the game of golf for certain reasons. Players on my left and the commissioner of the Asian Tour on my right. So we at Live Golf Investments, we recognize this. And, and part of the, part of the um, decisions and behind the scenes discussion we have, we, we want to understand where and how do you unlock a sleeping giant? And the Asian tour has been a sleeping giant for a long period of time. I first went to Asia and played as a player and uh, making, you know, coming out of a, a pro shop as an assistant pro. It gave me the gateway, the pathway to open competition and uh, free opportunities to experience different cultures and different places. And I'll never forget that moment 40 odd years ago. I'll never forget the moment when I played the first exhibition match on mainland China. Never been done before. I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. I've seen the growth and development of the game of golf through Asia, through the Middle East, in my homeland, Australia, in Japan. We've seen Japan have this meteoric rise um, in recent times because of what Hideki done, had done. Where did Hideki play? The Asian Tour. He won the Asian Amateur. It was a pathway for him to become the US Masters champion. So when you recognize these opportunities of the sleeping giant that's sitting out there, the investment opportunities as a partner to come in and get involved with the Asian tour and to launch what we have behind us, the international series, is what I'm going back to in the beginning. It's a great honor. And because I could play the game of golf, I've got, done a lot of other things in the game of golf you know, outside of just playing in the business and building the business, designing golf courses all around and in and through Asia. 
And when you put it into perspective, between the Middle East and the Asia Pacific Rim, that's 45% of the golfing market. That's four and a half billion people sitting there with an opportunity for the game of golf to grow. 4.5 billion people to give them that the opportunity. 60% of all development today, golf course construction, is happening in the Middle East and in the Asia Pacific market. You think about those economic booms that they're doing. Cho sees it all the time. So when you see those opportunities, we as stewards of the game have to open those pathways up even more. So our investment dollars, which is about $300 million to date, we started off at 200, and we've gone to $300 million, is because we believe in the players, we believe in the partners that we're associated with the Asian tour, we believe in the future of where the game of golf can go. So in a nutshell, what have we really done? We've identified a new opportunity out of a lost opportunity. And I mean that in all sincerity. And uh, the lost opportunity uh, people should be embracing, other institutions should be embracing that we are very, very respectful and will always be open and we're always going to be a healthy, friendly competitor. And that's important to know because the market is huge and it's open for everybody. And we're going to have these open pathways. So from Live Golf Investments, this is just the start for us. I mean, the 10 event series is what we're, we'll be starting off is just the beginning. It's the beginning of an exciting new journey. So and I want to just thank our partners. I want to thank the players. And I want to thank Ju Yong for his belief of what's going on. There's going to be thousands of Ju Yongs coming through. But what we're doing is we're giving them the opportunity to do what he loves to do the most, to compete in a fair and equal competitive market, giving him a pathway to move on, his pathway which he'll be recognizing this year for the second time ever. I'll let him talk about it. So we are proud of that. And I'm just saying to the partners, we're always going to be, and the players, we're always going to be standing shoulder to shoulder, side by side, and just trying to capture this lost opportunity and open up a whole new market. So with that, over to the sure. commissioner. <laughs> Joe, if I can just come to you first to respond to Greg's announcement, and if you can just talk about the International Series, what it means to you, what it means to the tour. Sure, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Saudi International um, this week. It's a great opportunity for us at the Asian Tour to be part of a fantastic tournament that's one of the, the, the most well-known tournaments on the global golfing calendar. So for players like Ju Young, the 50 plus members of the Asian Tour, we're really happy to be here this week. And it's an auspicious week because it's Chinese New Year Day today, or Lunar New Year. So Gong Si Fat Chai to everyone. I see one person in the audience is wearing a red shirt like myself. So I'm wishing everyone health, happiness, and prosperity for the Year of the Tiger to come. So Happy New Year, everyone. And we're delighted to be celebrating uh, the opening of the 2022 season here in Jeddah. Um, like Greg said, this is a wonderful opportunity for the Asian tour, not only in terms of starting the season, but looking ahead to the international series, which was uh, launched briefly in November. But um, you know, we're, we're here today to add some color, to add some more details to uh, what the international series will be, what it's all about. Um, and how we're gonna elevate the status of the Asian tour. So um, I guess the most important thing for everyone uh, and everyone's been asking for the last two months is where are the international series tournaments gonna be held? When will they be? What the prize monies will be? So, I mean, the first thing I'd like to announce is the first tournament is going to be in Thailand. Um, it's going to be called the International Series Thailand, being played at Black Mountain Golf Club, which is familiar to a lot of us in this room. We played many golf tournaments there. It's a world-class venue. The prize purse will be $1.5 million, uh, and that will kick off the series. Uh, the next destination that we'll visit is London at Centurion Club. Uh, the prize purse will be $2 million at Centurion Club. Um, and yes, it comes to it comes as a surprise to many of us in this room, but um, it's basically part of our strategy to make the Asian tour more of a global tour, 
we have members from all over the world, 25 different nationalities playing on the Asian tour. Um, it's not just for Asians, it's not just in Asia, and we will be playing in other destinations outside, such as the Middle East. We'll be playing in Asia, in China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Vietnam, and Indonesia, but dates and locations to be confirmed because uh, we are still in the midst of a COVID pandemic uh, where travel is difficult in Asia. So we'll be adding more details to the other eight events of the season in due course, but uh, for today, the details of the first two in Thailand and England uh, are what we're here to talk about. Thank you. Just before we go to Ju Yong and talk to a player about this announcement, do you just want to tell us how proud you are of this young man and, and others coming through your, your, your tour like this? Oh, absolutely. We've always said that the Asian tour is the youngest and most vibrant tour out there, and the proof's in the pudding. You look at the order of merit winners over the last few years, they've all been under the age of 24. Ju Yong is 19 years old, have, hasn't even reached 20. But um, his story is very much a story that we're very proud of. He came through qualifying school three years ago. He um, paid his dues playing the Asian development tour. He worked his way up to the Asian tour and was talented enough to win. And then the COVID pandemic hit. So um, he didn't have a lot to play, but he grounded out. He went back to the drawing board, developed his game, went to America, competed on his home tour in uh, Korea. He managed to win three times in Korea, uh, won the Order of Merit over there. As soon as the Asian tour started up again, uh, he was ready to go. Um, phenomenal finishes in Thailand, winning one tournament in Singapore and coming second. So I think um, everyone in this room uh, should remember the name. He's going to be a world beater soon, and we're very proud of what he's done. And um, that type of story actually personifies what the Asian tour has gone through as an organization as well. Uh, we're a young organization. We were trending upward before the COVID pandemic hit, and then it was disastrous for us for a year and a half. But through a crisis, there's always an opportunity. We work with Greg and the team uh, to work on how we would come back, how we would come back stronger and uh, reach this arrangement with Live Golf, which is going to propel us to new heights. So, Thank you, quite the introduction. Joe Young, I've just come to you now. This, this personally must be terrific news for you. I'm sure you're, you're, you're thrilled at the prospect and you, you're already you know, looking forward to these two tournaments that have been announced. Can you just talk to us about what this means to you? Um, yeah, I mean, as Cho said, I started from the ADT and um, to be honest, I feel like Asia is a very underestimated uh, tour because the competition is just absolutely crazier. And um, you see in the world stage where a lot of Asian people are carrying the flag. And um, I think Asian tour is the start. And this is the pathway to the big stage. And just because of how hard the tour is, I feel like if you can play well out here, you can play good in the big stage. So um, you know, I'm very lucky to be able to play on this tour. and. Um, for, to have additional tournaments and the prize money as well as a very big bonus and I'm pretty sure all the players are very, you know, very happy about it. I'm sure 18 months ago this was unthinkable, not only for COVID but sort of your own personal journey. What's, that, what's it like to be sitting here now in front of the world's media? Yeah, I mean, after the pandemic, you know, I was just waiting around until Asian Tour started and, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking about the past and uh, once, once they announced it, you know, the prize money went up. We had more events, you know, um, f just very, very lucky. Greg, if I might come to you again, can you just sort of explain to us what does um, Live Golf Investments hope to come out of this investment? You know, what do you look to achieve? Why make this investment? Well, like I said in the beginning, it's an investment into the future of what the game of golf represents uh, in this region. Um, Look, Live Golf, this is just the beginning for us, to be honest with you. Um, we, we're always looking for opportunities to invest into different markets around the world. And, and um, you know, just staying focused on this and just hearing what Ju Yong said, it, you know, when, as a player, it's just music to my ears to hear that because this is just one individual who's achieved a, a lot in a very early age of his career. This is one individual that's so appreciative of the opportunity that lays ahead of, for him and the other players. So when you hear that, you go, this is what it's all about. 
right? It's part of a very complex and very understood business model that we're taking forward because of that. The players, no, there's not a professional golfer in this planet that cannot get to his destination without having support of great partners. There's no question about it. Um, and we're giving them that pathway to doing it. So from a live golf perspective, like I said, this is just the beginning for us. We see so many great opportunities ahead. Um, we identify virgin space or lost opportunities that people have overlooked for decades and decades and decades. So we do also recognize that being uh, you know, respectful and healthy competitors gives that ability to go forward. So from my perspective, it's just a, it's just a, uh, a blessing to sit down with some super intelligent people as we look to the future, knowing you're hearing the words like what Ju Yong just said in the background. Thank you. And, and everything is so new. It's happening so fast, as you just described. Can you just explain the relationship between Live Golf Investments, the Asian Tour, and even your own personal role in this? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm the chairman and, um, uh, excuse me, the CEO of Live Golf Investments. Joe is the commissioner of the Asian Tour. Um, Joe's done a phenomenal job. That's one of the reasons why when we sit back and look at it for the last year and a half, maybe a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, but you know, we look at what Joe and his team behind the scenes have de developed and delivered, right? So you've got to understand their viewpoint and their, their goals, what they have into the future. So Cho's done a phenomenal job and will continue to be a phenomenal commissioner for the tour. And, and Greg, you're one of the first players really to play the game globally. As you said, started in Asia, then Europe, made your way to the US. But even when you were world number one, you continued to play all around the world. How important do you think that is? Um, look, it's, it's up to the individual. Look, I, I took the roles and responsibilities on my shoulder um, primarily because I love to, to understand uh, what the game of golf could do. Today, I look at it through a different prism. Today, I look at it through as a, a golf diplomacy. And I mean that in, in many different ways because through my other business entities I have, through golf course design, for example, you, get, you start to understand where, where the money's moving around the world. And like I mentioned in the top of my uh, opening remarks, 60% of all golf course construction is happening in this region. I've seen it in Vietnam, I've seen it in Japan, I've seen it everywhere we go. And if you see the investment dollars, FDI, foreign direct investment money moving in, golf is an economic indicator. Is without question. And so when you know there's an economic indication showing that what's happening in the Middle East, you know, I built the first grass golf course in Oman, Jordan, right? I mean, excuse me, in Jordan. Then I was built a golf course in Oman. So you see the growth of what's going on through the Middle East and you, and you go, thank you, for one, for being involved with it. Number two, thank you for my business from being involved with it. So it's incumbent on me to take the responsibility on, and I'm willing to do it to actually give the next 40 to 50 year pathway for the game of golf to grow and develop, and, and live golf investments as part of that. Thank you. Joe, if I can just come back to you again, what will stand out about these tournaments against your current schedule? Will it have a different look or feel, and will it engage fans in a different way or through broadcast? Sure, I mean, these 10 tournaments are certainly going to be a level up for the Asian tour. Um, we still have regular events on the Asian tour which make up our backbone, which are very important to our players. But these 10 events are going to be um, set up in a ways where the fans and the players have an enhanced experience. So you look at the setup this week. Uh, I'm not saying that every single week will be as, as uh, spectacular as this week, but they're going to come close. There's going to be um, great hospitality. There's going to be enhanced, enhanced television. At each tournament, there's going to be more media. Uh, obviously, we're going to be able to re reach out to more fans um, and make the experience for the players who compete a special experience where they can tell other, their other peers from uh, around the world that, hey, the Asian tour is very hospitable. The Asian tour's quality of staging is just as good as anywhere else in the world. And it's a fun place to play. And uh, it's an alternative uh, ways to move up the ranks in the world of golf. Thank you. Jo Young, just to come back to you, um, you won the Asian, uh, uh, the Asian Tour Order of Merit, you know, a career highlight, I'm sure. But due to recent changes from the RNA, that win, win wouldn't have been good enough to get you into the Open. Um, you took your qualifying place through a, a top four finish in the Singapore Open. 
How did, how did you feel about that change from the RNA for, on behalf of yourself, and was it discussed amongst the tour members? Um, again, first of all, I, I was very fortunate to have the chance to um, get my get a spot at the Open at the Singapore uh, Open, and yeah, obviously, if you win the Order of Merit, it'd be great if you actually had a spot. But um, it wasn't the case. But um, from my st from my point of view, I was very fortunate that I finished. I finished second and got a spot, but I think if you had won the Order of Merit, it'd be definitely more of a reward if you got a spot. And Joe, just coming to you, same question. I mean, absolutely. It was disappointing that the Asian Tours exemption into the Open was not present at the 150th Open Championship at the home of golf. Uh, obviously, a very significant tournament, but uh, hey, like Ju Young said, we're a resilient tour, we've got resilient players, and we did it the hard way. Um, there's still opportunities for some of our players to get into the Open through various qualifying tournaments around the world. And we will have players play in the Open Championship and they will have earned it. Thank you. Just going to open the floor up now to questions. Um, anybody? Any questions? Joy, if we come to you first. Jesse. Hi, Greg. Uh, Joe, thank you for, first of all, the tournament and the announcement. Uh, wouldn't it have been really interesting if you had announced an international series event in the U.S. as well at the same time? Uh, baby steps. <laughs> I think uh, you know, it's, it's exciting for us to do the 10 event series, Thailand obviously being one of our favorite destinations, and uh, doing a tournament in London is certainly uh, different for us, but we're going to embrace the opportunity and our guys are going to have a good time and, and uh, fly the flag high for us there. Yeah, and the International Series is not going to be geo-fenced, right? And just because the International Series is associated with the Asian Tour, don't, we want to get the message out there that it's just not specifically for the Asian region. And that's crit critically important for everybody to understand, right? Healthy competition and respectful competitions should be sp spread globally. So that's why we're not going to geofence this. That's why it's so encouraging that we can go to London. It'll be so encouraging when we go to the United States. It'll be so encouraging. Remember what I said, this is just the beginning. So in the beginning, we have to get, like Cho says, get off with baby steps, understand what, where we need to go and how we're going to need to do it. This is just the infancy of this journey. And it's really going to be an exciting journey. Uh, just to build. Sorry, just to build on that, we have a, a question online that's come in from the Telegraph. Can we see the London stop as a statement event, if only that you mean business, and nobody's backyard is off limits? Well, I think it's, it's not so much um, going into someone else's territory. It's, it's like um, Greg said, it's a, it's a global game. Um, we're not geo-fenced. We, as the Asian tour, are not limited to only Asian players players from all around the world can come and qualify and play our tour. It's an open tour. Um, and if, if you look at the way the other tours are operating as well, there's um, instances where the PGA Tour plays in Asia. There's instances where the DP World Tour is trying to or playing in Asia as well. So obviously there's no boundaries anymore in the world of golf. Thank you. Best. Back to you, Joy. Uh, my next question was uh, so many questions actually, but just the next question is, uh, Again, to both Greg and, and Joe, are you surprised at the kind of vehemence uh, that the Asian Tour is receiving for joining hands with Live Golf? Uh, I, of course, we know there are other things involved, but, but this is just one part of the equation. And I think, personally, I think it should be embraced by everyone. But that's not the case. I mean, you have the tours which are like gone after the Asian Tour, like, you know, I mean, like, uh, just with plain vehemence. Yeah, I mean, on behalf of the Asian tour, you're right. I mean, we've been vilified as bad boys in the press uh, over the last few months. And I mean, I really think it's unjustified. I mean, any tour and any tour that's out there for the members has a responsibility to its membership to look at sponsorship and partnership opportunities to improve our tour. Um, likewise, the European tour work with DP World um, in their sponsorship to title sponsor the tour. So I don't see us working with Live Golf Investments or any other promoter, any other sponsor throughout uh, the course of the season as 
a bad thing. I mean, I'm, I'm out here to increase the number of playing opportunities for our members. I'm here to increase the amount of prize money that's on offer. I'm here to improve uh, the awareness and the experience for the fans of golf in Asia. And I think this is exactly what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, and from our perspective is, I think the most compelling indicator for me is the number of calls we've had from corporations and other, other individuals excited about the opportunity. Why? We've given another pathway. We've given another opportunity for corporations, players, everybody across the board to see that uh, fair and equal competition is there to be had. Um, so when you think back in the past, right, uh, I've, like I mentioned, for 40 plus years I've been involved with the game of golf. I've been involved with these institutions that you're probably referencing, right? And I was only involved, and I'm speaking for me, myself personally, as a professional golfer, is that was my only pathway. And you only had one choice to make. You either had to go there or you had nowhere. So that's great, that's, that's what we had to deal with. But now there's different pathways. There's different pathways for Zhu Yong to go forward and just to experience his ability to elevate his game to get to wherever he wants to go. And if our, 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 you know, the Live Golf Investments allows the Asian tour to get elevated through the international series, God bless competition, right? There's not a human being in this room. There's not a CEO or corporation anywhere on this planet that haven't achieved certain levels without competition. You haven't become a great journalist without the competitors you have around you. You know how many people would love to take your job and be sitting in your seat right now? Healthy competition's a great thing, right? So as long as we do that in a respectful, healthy way, everybody's going to be a benefactor. Every, every bit of the ecosystem for the game of golf will be the benefactor. So just right now, there's this new opportunity. And like I said, and you use the word embrace. Every institution should be embracing this new opportunity of unlocking the lost opportunity that's been left sitting there for decades and decades and decades. Next question, anybody else in the room? That's great. Thank you. Luis from South Korea. Is a, I want to ask to Sir Greg. Sir Greg. What kind of legacy do you want to leave in Middle East or in Asia? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? Legacy? Yeah. Look, just growing the game of golf. That's just the most important thing for me. Um, I've seen the game of golf grow in my country through my commitment to my country. I've seen the game of golf grow in the United States through the era that I grew up in. I saw the game of golf in Japan when I went there and I played Jumbo Ozaki and Asei Aoki and Tommy Nakajima and Masi Kurumoto, right? I've seen the game of golf change through there. I've seen the game of golf through Dubai grow up when, the first, when I first went to Dubai, the, the tallest building was the Hard Rock Hotel, maybe 10 stories. I've seen the evolution of the game of golf grow so much through a game and through the value of the game that it can do from hospitality, economics, employment, across education, everything across the board. And my responsibility is to make sure we unlock all those potential opportunities that sit out there. Not be an institution that just sits there and say, we own this space. Nobody owns the golf space. The golf space is free. It's the sport of golf that we have the ability as investors to go in and invest, to seek a return on that investment through partnerships with the Asian tour, through partnerships with whomever wants to come out there. Like I mentioned, it's just been an incredible, since I've been involved since, in, since August, it's been an incredible inundation of phone calls and people who have been involved with the game of golf for decades and decades now all of a sudden seeing a new opportunity coming, they're going, can we sit down and talk to you please? And we say, sure. What are you seeking? What are you looking for? This is where we're going. We're having major institutions wanting to invest into live golf investments. 
So it's the, it's the pathway for everybody to be, like I've said before, be the benefactor of success. And success can only be achieved through competition. We're just going to uh, have another question just from, from the audience who are following online from around the world. Um, the Middle East is an important region for the DP World Tour. How important is the Middle East going to be for the Asian Tour? And how many events might we see in the region? It's greatly important to us. And now, now that we've done our first event here at the, the Saudi International in a long time in the Middle East, it's, it's just the first step of many. Um, we're looking to do two of our international series events in the Middle East region. And like Greg said, my phone has been inundated with calls, especially from sponsors, potential stakeholders in the Middle East wanting to have a piece of the action. So I think it's going to be a huge part of what we do in the future. Um, we've just entered a partnership with the MENA Tour as well, where um, eventually the Asian Development Tour and the MENA Tour will become one. So it, it's a huge uh, area for us to grow in, and we're looking forward to it. Thank you. We just go back to the floor, Bernie. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Greg, I remember when I first started annoying you on the tour. Then you got involved in business. And I remember, I think, if I'm correct in saying, you went to boardroom meetings dealing with your businesses, and you sort of started falling asleep, maybe dropping off a bit. But then you realised how important it was to be to, to be hands-on with your businesses. Just wondering, of all the businesses you've, you've been involved with off the course, what sort of challenge does this present compared to those other businesses you have, like the wineries, the restaurants, that you sort mean of stuff? In my personal business yeah. life? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's easy. I'm, I'm now the chairman of that company. I'm not the CEO. So I have great people behind me that are doing that, have been doing it for decades for me. I've had individuals who have worked for me close to 30 years within that company. So they've seen, they understand where my vision is now. Um, I'm, I'm going to say my vision is a little bit unique to most, especially in my business, is I look out not just what's happening today or tomorrow or next year. I'm looking out 12, 15, 20 years into the future, 40 years into the future, um, because I can look back with a, with a vast amount of experience and knowledge about what happens over a period of time. So the, the individuals I have placed in my company today have been with me long enough to understand my viewpoints. So if, if they need a question to be answered, I'll go answer. But I will not get involved with the minutia of the day-to-day -day stuff except for golf course design. That's still my passion. And the reason why it's a passion is because I touched on it before. It's an economic indicator. We have so much involvement with different governments around the world because of golf course design. So I will still stay vehemently passionate about that because I can take opportunities um, that we see in there. So I'm 100% focused as chairman, excuse me, as CEO of Live Golf Investments, and I'll remain that way until we achieve our goals. And what that goal is, or goals, plural, time will tell. And just taking that forward, and I know you've only mentioned and announced a couple of initial tournaments, but being an Australian yourself, would you like to see maybe one day an international series heading down under? Yeah, absolutely, of course I would. Uh, remember, we're, we're, this is just the beginning, so there are going to be other opportunities. This is not just going to be 10 events, it's going to be more than 10 events. So the pathways to the future are, are very, very broad and very, very varied in a lot of ways. And of course it would. Australia, in my heart of hearts, is where it all started for me, right? And, uh, but, you know, at the, at the same time talking about it, the, the Australian um, decided to keep their alliance with the European tour. Hey, that's their decision. But anything you do in business, always keep your eyes wide open and keep your opportunities you know, out there for you to be able to make a flexibility or adaptability to new environments and new opportunities. That's all I say. So from my personal pers perspective, I would like to see it. There's no question about it. To me, Australia is part of Asia, right? We're the, we're the Pacific Rim. And I think when you start looking at the connection of all the countries around there and all the population and the, and the value of money that's running through that region, um, Australia is a very integral part of that. Greg, just a couple more questions from, from the media who have who've, um, tuned in for us around the world. Um, Golf.com. American golf fans tend to have an American-centric view of the game. From where you sit, which golfers had the biggest global impact on the game today? Which individual golfers? Yeah. 
Um, look, I, I've got to say the game of golf today is very, very healthy. Uh, Joe mentioned the number of different nationalities that play on the Asian tour. I don't know what it is on the U.S. tour or the European tour, but it's probably 25 to 35 different nationalities. That only confirms the comments that I made in the beginning about the game of golf needing to be expanded on a global basis. Why do international players have to go to one location to increase their opportunity for success? Why aren't there multiple different places for the international player to be able to go to? And why isn't it the opportunity for maybe an American player to spread his wings and come and play on the international series that is not geofenced and learn different cultures and different places and different corporations and different this? That's part of growing up. So, um, you know, from my perspective, yeah, you know, the game of golf is extremely healthy. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure it's not going to change going forward. The quality of play um, has been elevated. Um, so it's just wonderful. And obviously, the, from a social media standpoint, we've got Travis over here in the back corner with PJ Memes, right? To see what social media has done for the game of golf, for the players, for institutions, is amazingly incredible. And so we have to reach down. The, the average demographic of a golf fan today is the oldest in sport. It's 65 and a half. We have a problem. So we have to reach down through the Travises of the world, we have to reach down to that younger generation, Ju Young and younger, right? Down to the 12, 13, 10 year old kids who just and pluck them up here and just give them a, get, allow them to have the opportunity of seeing golf in a different light. And that's part of what Live Golf Investments is going to be doing. One more question from the floor at the back. Um, this is a question for Cho. This is uh, Fedwa from Saudi TV. Uh, this is his fourth uh, edition of the championship and uh, the first under the umbrella of the Asian Tour. What does this uh, partnership with the Saudi Gulf mean to you? And what's the new in this uh, tournament? Who's the, sorry? What the new in this uh, tournament? <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is very exciting for us to be part of the fourth edition of the Saudi International, the first on the Asian tour. Um, our players, such as, Ju, uh, as Juyong, they're embracing the opportunity to play against the best players in the world. Um, it's not often that we get a chance to play against these stars from around the world, play for this type of prize money, to play for this amount of world ranking points. So we're looking to, uh, I guess our members are looking to take advantage of this playing opportunity and really um, show the world what the Asian tour players are capable of. Um, what's new this year? Obviously the prize purse going up from 3.5 million to 5 million. Uh, the winner takes, a ho takes home a million dollars as the winner's check. So that's one of the biggest things. And obviously seeing different people playing from different countries is, is the biggest thing for us. Thank you. Just, we'll have one more question from, from around the world and then we'll have one more question from in the room and then we'll, we'll close it down after that. Greg, um, coming to you um, from the, the Times, you mentioned being friend, a friendly competitor to the PGA and DP World Tours. Clearly they don't see it that way. Are you prepared for a fight if it comes and are those tours on sticky ground if it comes to threatening players with sanctions? Well, we're not in this for a fight. There's no question. Uh, we're in this for the good of the game. That's what we're at. Um, and it's, you know, it's disappointing, um, to be honestly, personally disappointing, to see some of the attacks that have been taking place unwarrantedly. Um, to any time you go into, um, if you prejudge anybody without knowing the facts, and shame on you, to be honest with you. Um, are you scared of something? is what is Live Golf Investments doing that you're scared of? Why do you have to have these, these attacks to the level they do? Understand the fact that we have always and continue to be very collaborative and cooperative with any of the institutions right across the board. We want to work together side by side. There's a really interesting analogy. There's a piece of pie, right? So if these institutions you're talking about 
if a piece of that pie has disappeared, does the pie get smaller or does the pie get bigger? We see the piece of pie that we're taking, the opportunity we see through the lost opportunity, makes the pie bigger. So when you look at Facebook, the share price was $3 at one time. Now what is it? Okay, You've got to be able to give the ability to sit back and listen and understand the opportunities that sit side by side for the sport of golf. Simple as that. It's all about the game, and I cannot enforce this enough to anybody, times anybody. It's for the betterment of the game. It's not the betterment of administrations or anything else. It's the betterment for the players, the fans, the stakeholders, broadcasters, everybody across the board. So I would encourage them to sit back and say, maybe it's a good time to sit down and understand if we can work side by side. Understood. Any further questions in the room? One, one more. I have a question for Control. Mm -hmm. um, why did you decide to kick off the series in Thailand? Kick off? What? Yeah. In Thailand. Well, obviously, Thailand is a very important market for us. Uh, we've played a lot of tournaments in Thailand over the years. A lot of our members are from Thailand. And most importantly, in this point in time, Thailand is a country that we can play in. Um, Japan, Korea, Indonesia, Singapore, they still remain fairly restrictive. And the Thailand government has been very supportive of us doing tournaments. Um, and it's just an enjoyable destination. It perfectly uh, summarizes what the Asian tour is about, the hospitality, uh, the, the country as a destination. And there's no uh, better place for us to kickstart the season. So it just works very well for us. Okay, fi final question, Joy. Sorry, la last question. Greg, uh, I think the one aspect of it that everyone wants to know is obviously the Super Golf League. And I know this is for the international series, but what are your plans for that? And how is Asian Tour involved? Wha is that the reason why everyone is so, you know, annoyed with the tour? Well, I missed the... With what? What was the the point? Super Golf League? Are you, are the you Super what? The Super, super go Golf League. Super oh, the Super Golf League. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, it, are you going to make any announcement about that? Why the silence? And do you think because of the role Asian Tour is playing with you right now, that is the reason why everyone is so upset with the tour? Look, they're upset for their own reasons. You know, from our perspective, we have our game plan about how we're going through it. We're executing uh, extremely well uh, across all sectors of the, um, of the ecosystem. Um, if they want to be upset with us, that's their choice. We're not upset with them. We're not picking a fight. We don't want to do anything, like I explained before. So our process is this. Live Golf Investments is investing into the international series. That's what we're focused on now, today. Will there be things announced in the future? Absolutely, there are going to be things announced in the future. But right now, our, our focus is on this. Our mission is to make sure this platform is firmly cemented in, where the world of golf, in, in the world of golf and where we see it sitting. And we'll focus on that. And then there'll be another announcement, and there'll be another announcement. So this, this journey um, is just not a one-off journey. And you, you want to sit back and, and see the evolution and how this is all building out. It's going to be an incredible one. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. That draws a close to our press conference today. Um, I hope you all look forward to the, the start of, of the tournament on Thursday. Um, thank you again for your time, everybody. Thank you, gentlemen.